ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of the new job challenge. Yes, I know I'm here early as always to welcome you and have you ready for this challenge. I'm really excited. Yesterday, day one, we went through a lot. We were able to see how do you get started. We had our guest speaker, Cynthia. Rama taking us through her career journey and uh, what an incredible journey it has been with tons and tons of lessons uh, to learn from it. And I'm really excited that we are here live for day two. We will be officially going on at around 7.30. So we have about 13 minutes or so to go. But as always, I like coming in here early to welcome you, to get to know that you're here so that you can sort out your technology, make sure we are ready to go. So I want to know in the comments, drop this in the comments, where are you joining us from? Why are you here day one? What was your key takeaway? And if this is your first time, what is your expectation from this challenge? I am always glad to see each one of you coming in and dropping in the comment. As you saw yesterday, this is quite a live and interactive session. This is not about just doing some presentation, it's about you fully engaging and getting immersed in this session. So let me know, can you hear me first of all? Give me some feedback on the chat. Are you ready for this? If you're here yesterday, what was your key takeaway? Drop that in the chat. Thank you very much. I can see Esther Achichi, you're saying hi. I really like that, thank you very much. I can see already we have Mr. Kevin Wanyoni joining us all the way Lodua on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. By the way, just to let you know, we are streaming live on Facebook, we are on LinkedIn, and we are on YouTube, all these places. So I'm really, really happy to see that all of you are here for the new job challenge. John Nation saying you can hear us clear. Thank you very much. Where are you joining us from? Why are you here yesterday? What is the key takeaway if this is your first time today? How or what is it that you're looking out for? Imagine joining us all the way in Yeri. Karibu, Karibu Sana. Dingo John, you're saying yes, you can hear me, you're good. Why are you with us yesterday? What was your key takeaway? Or what is your expectation for today? At least drop something, yeah? Thank you very much. Oh, John Nation joining us all the way in Nigeria. I think we communicated some time on email. How is Nigeria? How? Were you here yesterday, by the way? If not, what was your uh, takeaway, yeah? Or what are you looking out for, too? Tabida Uwero, I can see you joining us all the way in Royero. Thank you very much for joining us. How was it yesterday for you? Rashid in Mombasa. Good, 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 good to have you. Good to have you. I'm really excited. Today is going to be a great, great, great day. This is your first time. Yeah, Wanyoji. Thank you very much. This is going to be a mind-blowing session. And I would also advise that you go and watch yesterday's uh, session. After this, yeah, it is still there on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube. YouTube, I think, is the best way you can be able to get most of this recording. And as we wait to uh, start off the day, I have just, as from what I saw from most people asking, they want to know, I asked, what is your expectation? They want to know how to write a CV, how to do... Uh, how to write a cover letter. I think there's a, a clip I'm going to check out there for you. Gerard telling us hi, thank you very much. And Veronica in Nairobi. Oh, John, you're saying you missed yesterday's session, do some engagement. The recordings are still up there for you, yeah? So we can be able to take off. So give me a minute. We are Ali. I'm happy to see that you're here, Ali. We will be able to proceed uh, shortly. But in the meantime, I think it is good for me to give you some idea. How do you write a uh, cover letter a professional cover. you can see how assertive this. this cover letter is my strong communication administrative analytical and interpersonal skills combined with my bachelor's degree in business administration makes me an exceptional candidate for this position in this video we are going to go through this cover letter administrative officer cover letter and narrow down to what makes it really work and at the same time, I'm going to give you a variety, 101 sample cover letters that you can be able to copy and paste for any position. So without further ado, let's get started. To 
today we are going through the ultimate cover letter guide 101 sample cover letters for all professionals and i will be giving this guide 100 percent free to you so hang on into this video as we review this specific cover letter as we go down you can see yeah we define what is a cover letter we also give you some tips on how you can be able to match the cover letter to the job description there's actually even a whole sample where you can just put in your information but i'm not interested in all this i want us to go straight to this cover letter of administrative officer as you can see it is on page eight of the guide and this person writes a very very good cover letter and let's dive in to see what really makes it work when you read the first paragraph you just pulled in take a look at what he says dear mr john as a highly qualified and enthusiastic individual with intensive work experience in the field of management and administration i am applying for the position of administration officer with sun national bank my strong communication administrative analytical and interpersonal skills combined with my bachelor's degree in business administration makes me an exceptional candidate for this position so right there he talks about his qualification he also aligns his skills and experience to this position when you read this paragraph you really want to know more about this person and how they fit in that job and he goes on explains it very clearly let's check the second paragraph during my various administrative job i have developed strong organization and time management skills which would be very useful for sun national bank my strengths lie in all the administrative work that goes into making any business a success he's already creating his unique selling proposition and aligning his experiences to this specific job and you can't help but realize that he was able to customize this specific cover letter for the role so it's not a general cover letter that he uses and forwards it every time he gets a job for an administrative officer it is very customized to this let's continue he talks about my claim can be supported by the fact that i wrote a manual on self-training of new employees which is still considered as the highest form of training material within the abc company i'm experienced in all aspects of administrative work he goes again to list them out which is handling customer service ensuring all systems within the company are running smoothly training new employees maintaining records and communicating with forces in and outside the office so this person is now bragging which is a good thing bragging in the sense that i have done some of this stuff before this is what i have done he also talks about one of his key accomplishment where he worked in this company created a trading manual and it is still being used to date and it is one of the best trading material that is out there this is what you need to do when you're writing your cover letter you're bragging although we have been brought up in a society where bragging is not a good thing but when you want to sell yourself in a cover letter bring any and all evidence you have to support what you are saying you have done and you are able to do to this company let's continue to the third paragraph furthermore i am a strong-minded individual who has the potential to lead the staff while exceeding the expectations of the employer in addition i am very proficient in computers specifically in microsoft office suit and microsoft projects my enclosed resume will provide you with the details of my qualifications and skills which would make me an asset to your company so here again he brings in some of the skills some of the qualifications that sets him apart from the rest but he does not replicate his cv or her cv by the way it's not very specific if it is a he or a she but this person does not replicate his cv but mentions that if they want to see their qualification they can easily find the resume or the cv attached and finally we come to a very strong close this is what he says i would like to meet you in person to discuss further how i would utilize my capabilities to contribute to the mission of sun national bank i will call your office during the coming week 
to see if a mutual convenient time of meeting would be arranged. In the interim, I will be available on my cell phone number 00999 or my email. There you go. You put the email. Thank you for your time and consideration. You sincerely. Then you put in your name right there. So you can see a very strong close and having a call to action. You actually are even presuming that they will invite you for an interview or even you want to call them to set up the call. However, this is quite aggressive. I don't necessarily advise you to do so, but in this case, it fits perfectly. You can get these sample cover letters on all other cover letters that you might want when you go to www.careerpoint.co.ke forward slash cover letter. Here you'll get an opportunity to download the ultimate cover letter guide, 101 sample cover letters for all professions. This will help you make that first great impression with this professional cover letter that you're going to send as you apply for the job. Inside the ultimate cover letter guide, this is what you will find out. Number one, how to write the perfect cover letter better than nine out of 10 others, the format and what makes it special. You will also find the 101 sample cover letters for all professionals that will give you more interviews and why cover letter writing tips and hacks to boost your chances of landing a job and finally you'll also get actionable ideas on how to start and end a cover letter plus how to address it head over to www.careerpoint.co.ke forward slash cover letter the other thing that goes hand in hand with such a good cover letter is a professional cv and that is why i want you to watch this video on how to write a professional CV. Make sure you like this video, subscribe. As you can see, most people who watch my videos have not yet subscribed. So make sure you subscribe. And until my next video, I'm out. Yeah, that is the kind of value that you're going to get in this session. Yeah, this, this, that's just one of the samples uh, videos. You can get tons and tons of value on our YouTube page. And I'm really excited to have you for day two in the next one minute or so. We will be getting started. Thank you very much. I just want to do some quick roll call. Still, I can see Dan Karamondi joining us all the way in Mombasa. Thank you very much. Oh, there was a good one here I saw, yeah? Yeah, Joseph was with us yesterday. And this is what he says about his key takeaway. One of the greatest takeaway um, he got was knowing yourself, knowing yourself, and actually even believing that you are worth it. I talked to one of the people and they told me that was a game changer for them when they actually learned about knowing that they are worth it because they have been self-doubting themselves. So a quick roll call before I can start. I can see our time is almost up. So before I go there, give me a second so that we can start and officially start our show for today. And gentlemen welcome to day two of the new job challenge it is exactly 7 30 we can officially start i want to appreciate each one of you who had kept in earlier i did a quick roll call i'll still be able to mention some of you who came in and today in day two is where we focus on accelerating your growth there's turn and turn of insight that i'm about to share with you on how you can be able to accelerate your growth uh, I am seeing us going past the time, but don't you worry. Everything will try to do it within one hour. And if it is spills over, just know it is for your own good. It is not that we just want to keep you here longer. So this is how the challenge is working out. For those of you who are coming in, we are here to help anyone who is feeling stuck in your career. So if you're here, you're feeling a bit stuck in your career, we are here to help you. And secondly, we are also trying to help someone who wants to change their career, they want to change their jobs, they want to move from one sector to another or just a better job in the same industry, whichever way, we are here to help you. This is the schedule. 
Yesterday, we I gave you the fundamentals, the basics on how you get started. If you missed it, go ahead and watch the recording. I can see, I think, was it, uh, who was it? Let me check their name. Yeah, like Rachel, you said that you missed yesterday's session, but you can get the recording. Yeah, go to YouTube, just search Daniel Mutuku. You'll be able to get the recording, search Jobs at Challenge Day 1. Then tomorrow, we will be looking at how do you get this UN Jobs. Now we'll get our hands dirty. I'll show you the exact tactics and how you go about it. And on Friday, being the last day, we'll be talking at how do you seal that deal. A quick preview and recap of how it was yesterday and some of the key takeaways i think i took you the first step of you getting started number one is believing that you are worth it i don't want to repeat much but if you don't believe it in yourself then it is very difficult for you even me to help you but start by you making uh, believing once you believe and it starts with your thoughts you make that decision that this is what i'm going for and i'll pursue it i'll do anything and everything as long as it is ethical and it is the right thing not illegal to get the job and number three creating that job search plan i gave you some uh homework i have received great great some great job search strategies and i like them i'll be giving winners some present uh today what was your key takeaway i would want to know from your side what was your key takeaway from our guest speaker we had syria rama so i think i'll pick this out i think i had seen this yeah you uh, uh should be able to uh believe in yourself if you're here yesterday feel free to drop in the chat and let me know what is was your takeaway from syria yeah i can see mary you're joining us from nairobi second day yeah i remember we were with you yesterday I can see Ellie joining us for the first time in Eldoret. Welcome. Macau Wambua. Hello. Karibu Sana. I can see there's Daniel in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Drop in the chat what were your takeaways from yesterday's session. And I gave you this homework. Most of you, I doubt this. I didn't see anyone posting on the Facebook group, but at least some four people are courageous. They sent me their job search. There was Isabel. There was Gasheri. There was today. I've just in the evening, I've seen Esther. And who is the other person? I think I've seen four of them. Thank you very much. I'll be rewarding somebody. And let me do a very quick training before I have my guest speaker. Today we have uh, two guest speakers who are coming in and I don't want to take much of their time. So allow me to jump straight into it for the next five minutes or so. Then we can be able to have our guest speakers on board. The first thing, when I learned about this quote, I think it was just mind blowing for me. It says, the mind once stretched by an idea never returns to its original dimensions and i am glad that you're here if you're here yesterday i'm sure your mind was stretched in a certain way by some of the ideas that we have shared if you're here for the second time if you're here for the first time today again your mind is going to be stretched in a new dimension and here's the good news it will never go back to its original dimensions it will just be stretched and never go back. But the challenge to you is, once it has been stretched, will you take action on it? Because most people get regrets because they know some stuff, but they don't take action on it and nothing happens for them. So only when you're able to take actions, will you be able to see things changing for you. I like what George is saying. Boldness is key. Be ready for growth was the key takeaway. George, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Oh, yes, Macau, I remember from Bungoma. I'm happy to have you here. I also see Bernstein. Okay, sometimes I get uh, derailed by these comments. Let me somehow hide them so that I can focus on the session. Quick question, why do we get paid? When you go to work and at the end of the month, you receive, you're waiting for you to receive a, a paycheck, why? We get paid as a way of compensation of the services that we offer to the employer. And the more valuable the services you are offering to the employer, the more the payment should be. Remember, you're not just paid because you have studied, because you have these qualifications, you have this degree, you have this whatever. You're being paid for the value that you're giving or providing into the company. And the more value you provide, then you can be able to be paid more and you can also be able to demand for more. 
And so what makes you valuable as an individual so that we can look at the money equation? What makes us valuable? That should be the question we ask ourselves. I might not have time to go through the comments for you to let me know what makes you valuable, but I'll just tell you the answer straight away. It is skills. It is not luck that makes us valuable. It is having the right skills. The biggest divide between the people who are successful in their career and those who are not, it is the skills gap. And you need to focus on personal development because this is where you get your key skills. I focus on how do I grow? How do I get better? That is personal development. Now, one of the things, and this will be the strategy, and this will be homework for today, and this is what will really accelerate your growth, is for you to do a skills inventory. Do you know what you are capable of? Do you know what skills, the key skills that you have? Do you know what is needed in the market? You can get your skills from your experience. You can get it from your education. Maybe some of the certifications that you have done. Soft skills are also very important. Hard skills, your hobbies. Do a skills inventory. And we'll discuss how you're going to do about it as your homework today. And I also want to bring to your attention that we have two types of skills. We have soft skills and hard skills. Hard skills, I will not go into details, but I want to mention this. From my own experience as a recruiter, I know that jobs are advertised based on hard skills, but hiring selection is done through soft skills. So be sure that you have both as you do your self-assessment. So your homework for today, I want you to do your own self-assessment, do a skills inventory, and list what are the key skills you have, your soft skills and hard skills. Drop that in the email, send me an email, let me know what is your current skill state, and also what is it that you also want to get? What kind of skills will take you to the next level? And you can share it on email or you can post it on our Facebook page. This is a whole section that we can go really deep into it. But because I really don't want to take much time, I know today we have tons and tons to learn from. I can see my guest speaker is here. Alice, I can see you there. I'll be bringing you shortly. So this is your homework. Make sure you do it and send it on email or share it with me on Facebook. I want to say thank you very much. I can see tons of people coming in. They are been in Nairobi. There's Samuel. There's uh, Edward in Kaloleni, Giriama. Uh, this is who? Carlton joining us. Uh, Carlton in Meru. Oh, this is super. This is super. So that is your homework. I will review it as we end uh, towards the end of the session. And at this point, I'm really excited to bring you my guest speaker for today, Alice, the conscientious coach. Oh, I bet it. Ah, that's quite a tough one. Kari Busada, how are you doing? I am super. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Ah, good, 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 good. I'm really happy. And finally, we were, uh, we have been able to make it. Here you are. And yeah. uh, as we start off, I think uh, I would want to you to tell us, yeah, someone who is seeing you for the very first time, who is this? Mm -hmm. uh, Alice, the conscientious coach. Hey, that's what <laughs> it is about you. <laughs> In a quick word, just a quick introduction. All right. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Alice Jambi. I like using the the name the conscious, the conscious life, coach life coach because it's something that I am very passionate about, and uh, I help people become more connected with themselves, with themselves. Become, more become more self aware. More self -aware. And uh, can you hear an echo? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, let me do this. It might be there. So to reduce it, I just need to fix my, uh, I know sometimes it's there with my, uh, I'm sure right now it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Now I can hear you very well. Ah, As good, good. I, oh, good. Conscious coach, not conscientious. Why I was there. Yes. <laughs> tell us about it. Conscious. Conscious. Oh, conscious to be aware. Coach. To be awake. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I help people do exactly that. Become awake and alive. To themselves mm -hmm. to their potential and just navigate life's challenges both in their personal lives and in their professional lives as well ah and okay, uh, okay. yes i'm excited to be here with you guys today thank you thank you very much now um for you to get where you are i'm sure you have your own ups and downs and yeah. uh, 
just from hearing your career journey, I'm sure there are tons and tons of lessons that we can be able to pick uh, from it. So I want to give you a challenge, maybe within five minutes or so, you can be able to crush all that experience and tell us um, how your career journey has been in a nutshell. All right. Um, where do I start? Okay, my career journey started, uh, today I wanted us to talk about my switch, yeah? And mm -hmm. uh, my switch started in uh, 2020, uh, right in the middle of the pandemic. But just to give you a brief background, I was doing, I was running a marketing and advertising agency before 2020. But I was in a space where I was not satisfied. I was not feeling fulfilled with my work. I just used to go to work for the sake of it. I mean, uh, it pays my bills, so I need to show up, yeah? And mm -hmm. at that point, I was looking for purpose. I knew, um, I needed to switch to a different career, but I didn't know uh, where or what. And it was, I know there's somebody here who's probably in the same space, yeah? Wondering what's next. This is not fulfilling. I need another challenge. And where do I start? So before 2020, that is where I was. I was running a marketing and advertising agency. And then um, COVID happened which is now in march and you know what um what happened with covid you know we were all not aware of what was going to go on we were scared no one knew no one had ever witnessed a pandemic like this so what would ha what happened was most of the clients that we had in the marketing agency pulled out they pulled out and we were left there as a nothing. We had no money coming in. We had no invoices. As in Atuna, anything, this, the business is just going down, yeah? Then okay. it happened to be a time in my life was I was doing a lot of soul searching and a lot of self-awareness, something that I love talking about. And I was sharing it with other people. So um, when COVID happened and uh, the uh, lockdown was announced, yeah? so right. i had to go back to the office to pick my staff then i remember a colleague told me alice you know what you do is coaching and i have never heard of the term coaching before in fact it was like huh nini." so i went home i searched and for me it just clicked i just knew by the way i love this because i was talking about my experiences with people and just you know analyzing myself and from people around me and seeing by the way most of the time we are not intentional we are not intentional about our careers we are not intentional about our families or our friendships two or two we are on autopilot someone shows up at work because yes they were hired but if you ask them you know what's your personal vision or your personal mission for this work akuna walikuja to job and that is what i was sharing with my friends then my friend tells me you know what you do is coaching i go online i look and it connects with me and from mm -hmm. there i was like okay we're in the middle of a pandemic there's no money coming i don't even enjoy what i'm doing so much but i'm so passionate about this so there's actually an opportunity of doing something doing something that i love but I was so scared. What is this? I mean, all Alice Jambi, what you have done is marketing and advertising your whole life. Say, uko middle age, in right in the, you know, in the middle of a pandemic with no money in your pocket and you want to change careers. Mm -hmm. But for me, when I look back, I think it was the best time because there was nothing for me to hold on to. You know, akuna kusema enye i job in ingizado, akuna job, akuna pesa. So I was like, okay. If I went back to the marketing, I'd still have to start from scratch, yeah? Fine, it's the comfort zone because I know it, it's familiar. But mm -hmm. what if, what if I do this? You know, what if I put all my effort? What if I took this time out? You remember there was a lockdown. We were all yeah. home. Yes, What yes. if, and thank God there was the internet. What if I actually enrolled and upgraded my skills and, you know, went into this, uh, thing full full swing mm -hmm. and that's what i did in 2020 i got into class i remember at that point i was doing i think 16 hour lessons and thank god for the time because people are watching netflix uh, me i'm in the house like 16 hours my kids don't even see me because i'm in class 
Uh-huh. But the thing is, I was enjoying it because it's something in alignment with um, what my heart felt was the right thing at that point. And right. yeah, that's how I started. So I upgraded Kidogo Kidogo. I put myself out there. I remember the first time I had my first coaching client. It was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kept on... Yeah, I kept on thinking, I have no clue what I'm doing, but I still, Mm -hmm. you know, I showed up and it's amazing. The client got so much benefit. He kept on telling me, you know, this is amazing. And they got so much insight. In -hmm. fact, after that session, they paid me for four sessions. And for me, that just fueled my my belief. Mm -hmm. And this thing can work. you know, it's it's possible. And that's how I started. And yeah, three years later, I am here and very grateful for the journey. That is quite a powerful story. But, uh, interesting. Thank I you. didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. Um, I like sometimes how I get surprised when we are doing these live interviews and I get to hear these stories. I'm like, quite a lot, quite a lot. I think what I'm getting, this was not your initial kind of uh, job. COVID nope. happened and you decided to see what is what what can i get out of this uh, pandemic but there i yeah. normally say you do not have control on events happening but exactly. you have control on how you respond to these events same exactly. thing can happen to two different people but how they respond totally different so i really like that and the fact that you decided let me upgrade this is what seemed to be calling the end you upgraded mm-hmm. your skills uh, but yeah. that's one of the things that we're talking today. One of the way to grow and really scale your career is having the right skills and keep on growing, which is yeah. uh, quite great. Now, tell us, um, I know there are tons and tons of lessons that we can get from the mistakes we did. So as you look back in your career, I like that switch. You can tell us about either in coaching or in the marketing uh, area. What are some mistakes that you have done and uh, what are some of the lessons that you get, uh, learned from that? Okay. Um, when I look back at uh, my journey since 2020 for my current career, I'd say mm-hmm. probably what I should have invested less in. Because when I started, I I didn't have any money, yeah, and yeah. and so I didn't have money to hire designers, graphic designers. So I had to learn. I had to learn to do most of the things myself. But when I look back. I spent, mm-hmm. my God, like hours and hours learning how to do things on Canva, which mm-hmm. I didn't have to. If only I'd have partnered, you know, sometimes you might not have money, but you might be knowing a graphic designer who you can switch skills. I can say, you know what, um, I'm going to coach you for the next, I don't know how many sessions, then in exchange, you're, you'll be doing the design work for me. So if I'm um, looking back, what I would have uh, done different was uh, having the background that I didn't have any cash, we'd have done butter treat with uh, people around me instead of um, I trying to learn everything that was not in my in my line of work. I should have concentrated on, you know, on building my coaching skills, my communication skills, my training skills, and then mm-hmm. let the designers do their work. Oh, that is quite a very powerful uh, lesson. Yeah, sometimes we feel as if we need to do everything just because we yeah. don't have money. Mm. I've also learned that we can do a lot even without money Yeah. by just exchanging. Exactly. A story that comes uh, on my just quick one. I think it was January. I was invited for a certain networking event. I really wanted to go for that event. Of course, there was a cost to it. Not that mm-hmm. I could not avoid, uh, I could not afford the cost to pay for the networking event, but I just reached out to the um, organizers and I told them I can help you advertise this event on my own social media yeah. platform. Because I have a yeah. much bigger following. I know they will benefit more. And then yeah. you give me a ticket, uh, mm. maybe like a sponsored ticket. And they were like, "We are happy to do that." And I was like, "Oh, sometimes you don't need the money." It's only that we we are told we need the money to get some stuff. You can look at how you uh, trade uh, that. That is quite powerful, very powerful. Before we get to questions, maybe from our listeners, 
Uh, if you have any question, if you're getting inspired, if you're getting motivated just from uh, Ali's uh, story, and you have any question, feel free to drop that in the comments. I will be pulling them up uh, shortly. What, uh, just to ask you, what would you give as advice for someone who wants a new job, either to change jobs from where they are at to a new one, maybe a better, better paying job, or someone who is just starting from scratch from university, they are looking for a job? I would uh, mention, and you had mentioned it when you started, yeah? It's something yeah. that um, we looked at yesterday, the power of self-belief. You know, you you will always go as far as your mind can take you. You know, if you think you're capable of taking up that job, yeah? If you think you can, in fact, it said, if you think you can and if you think you can't, you're right either way. And and let me just give um, some words that have have you know propelled me like the last three years someone told me this and it, it just really you know light up a fire under me and they told me this they told me if you don't say thou art if you don't say i am how will people say thou art which means you have to believe in yourself and call yourself those things you know if you don't say i'm daniel the career coach how will people say you're daniel the career coach so it has to start with you believe uh -huh. in yourself get out of your comfort zone because i'm so sure you can relate yeah it's mm -hmm. uh, you know getting a new job or, a, or just upscaling it's it's it can be uncomfortable you know there's anxiety there's pressure the expectations that you're probably thinking you might not be able to fulfill but mm -hmm. the only way you can be able to do that is get out of your comfort zone don't be afraid to try i can share so many job opportunities that i have lost myself why because i was thinking guy miss yezani you know maybe mm -hmm. they 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 got confused i don't have the right qualifications i don't i was just disqualifying myself before i even put myself out there mm -hmm. yeah oh thank you thank you very much i can see Macau Wambua here saying, that's me, Jambi. I think she's really uh, resonating with your uh, story. Uh, here, there's one. I Oh, some of your key takeaways, nothing changes if nothing changes. So you need to take action. I like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're saying you sent your um, strategy. OK, I'll check. I'll check. Uh, let me see if they have any questions here. Now, uh, we don't have any at the moment. Let me. First of all, uh, as we are here, invite uh, Isabel to join us because Isabel was, was with us yesterday. And actually I did, she sent her strategy, I called her and one of the things I asked her, what is your, was your greatest takeaway? She told me, well, it was like that idea I talked about, you need to know about your self-worth. Yeah. So I don't want to put uh, words into her mouth. Let me just invite her. I am lucky that she's here with us. How are you, Isabel? Maybe you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Very fine, very fine. Great to have you here today. Yeah. I think Alice has just reinforced the idea of uh, self-belief. But let me just uh, ask you, maybe you can share with us, all of us. How was it that you were feeling before? And then from the session when we talked about self-belief, it really clicked out uh, for you. Okay, as per yesterday's session, uh, yeah. I felt like I was just diminishing myself. I was mm -hmm. not believing in myself. If I am applying for a job, I, I'll say, hey, those skills, I don't think if I have them. I didn't mm -hmm. believe in myself. Mm -hmm. So after yesterday evening, I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's high time. I have mm -hmm. to believe in myself first for the employer yeah. to consider me. Mm. For sure, for sure, for sure. Now, yeah. Alice, I want to uh, put you down on the spot. At least she got it, that awakening and she thought, oh, I was actually really not uh, taking myself self-worth that much. What are some of the practical steps when someone is really having doubt in themselves, having doubt in their uh, actually worth? What are some of the things that someone can do, like Isabel here, just to reinforce or remind themselves of their worth? Any quick tactics that okay. you think can help i i think what uh, we really need to understand when it comes to self-doubt yeah self-doubt um is our thoughts they ca it comes from our thoughts yeah 
And our thoughts are nothing but stories that we either told ourselves or someone said about us. So say, for example, um, maybe in high school, I, will, I never used to do well in class. So my teachers used to tell me, Jinga sana." you know, I will mm -hmm. grow up thinking I'm not smart. So when it comes to a career setting, yeah, and I'm the one who's being told to take the lead, or it's a cocktail, I want to be uko nyuma. Why? Because I'm thinking I'm not smart enough. Let Daniel lead, you know, let Isabella lead because I am doubting myself. But what we really need to understand, those are thoughts. And those are self-limiting thoughts. And here's the thing about a thought. A thought is exactly that, just a thought, which means, and you're the thinker of the thoughts, yeah? So it means if you're thinking one thought, you can choose to think another thought. So most of the time when you're in that space, yeah, and let me share from my own experience. When I was in that space and I'd maybe ask myself, okay, maybe I'm not good enough to apply for this position. Then I'd ask myself, good enough according to who? According to whose standards? You know, when did yeah. I first experience the feelings of not good enough? so that I can be able to understand that this has nothing to do with my um, sending that CV to that organization, but this has something to do with what my mother or my father or my teacher said 30 years ago. So Unapata, it's, it's not even about whatever someone said to you or whatever you thought how many years ago is blocking you, is blocking you from moving a step forward. So it's all about being aware of our thoughts conscious thinking you know mm -hmm. it's just about being aware what am i thinking right now because uh, mm -hmm. as isabella mentioned it's all about the thought she used to think okay anyway, i can't be able to think uh, to do this yet now she has a different mindset so your mindset you're as good as your mindset you know your yeah. mindset is your ceiling yeah it's what will um either propel you forward or just keep you stuck or move you backwards. Thank you very much. I really appreciate for that timely uh, advice. Um, Isabel, also thank you very much for uh, honoring my invitation. I know this is, I just talked to you and you said, yeah, you'll be happy to come in and uh, share that. I'm really happy. And there's at least some takeaway that you've gotten from that, right? That's sure. Oh, yes. thank you, thank you. Oh, sorry, you are saying something. Yeah, definitely, because uh, as, per, as per the mentor has said, yeah, that yeah. we are supposed to have the positive thinking. So I think I'll, I'll start by doing that. Thank you. Thank you. It starts there. I'm really happy. I can see the second guest speaker is here, Gasheri. We are also going to come to you uh, shortly. So as your parting shot, as I will come the, the next uh, speaker. What would you say? What would you your parting shot be, Alice, um, for anyone who is joining us? Either they are looking for a job, they're still whatever space they're in in their life as the conscious life coach. What would you say? I would say be bold enough. Be bold enough. Be courageous enough to mm -hmm. step out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and be intentional. Be intentional in building your career. You're here to advise us on how to do that. Be intentional about your relationships. Be intentional about taking care of yourself, you know, your mind, your body, your spirit. Just mm -hmm. be conscious of what you're doing and be intentional in this journey of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. I have I've had a good time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Looking You're forward welcome. to learning from the other guests. Okay, okay, Karibu. So you can still stay there. I think well, when you're backstage, you can still see us. Yeah. You can still mm -hmm. listen. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now, I want to switch gears to the next guest speaker. He is, uh, uh, I think, personal branding uh, expert, public speaking, emotional intelligence. I know he doesn't know this, but he inspired me at some point, I think, is it 2019? That is why most of my videos you will see, I put on a quote. So without further ado, let's welcome Derek Banga. How are you, Derek? Daniel, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? And yes, I can me? hear you. Yes, I can hear you. I can see you. Yes, yes, yes. How are you doing? 
I am super, I am superb, I am superior. How's that? Oh, ah, that is good. That is good. That is great. That is great. I don't know why they say the way, I I'm seeing as if there's a delay on the video. I can hear you, but somehow I don't know if it is stuck or something. Ah, is there a little bit of a delay on the um on the video? Ah, oh yes, I think now we're good. Now we're good. Is that good? Okay. Oh, super. So um, for someone who is seeing you for the very first time, and I'll give you the backstory, as I said, um, actually, is it 2019? I'm not so sure. You were invited to come to Brayside School. I was part of that staff. If you remember, you talked about personal branding. And uh, one of the key takeaways I took is that I need to have my coat on. And that is why you'll see most of the videos up here. So for someone who is seeing you for the very first time, Kindly uh, let us, uh, you can introduce yourself and uh, what you do uh, before we get down to the uh, some of the other questions. Sure, sure thing, Dan. Well, first of all, I didn't realize that I'd inspired you to wear a jacket. Mm -hmm. Had I known that, I would have worn a blazer myself. <laughs> Even post-pandemic, <Yeah. laughs> uh -huh. I still think there is something to be said about presenting yourself mm -hmm. how you'd like the audience to take you. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so I've had a long day. It's been a warm day. And mm -hmm. so I have removed my jacket. It is hanging in my other room. But I have my uh, very nice um, uh, vest here. So I hope this will be appropriate. Yeah, you still room. look sharp on it. You still oh, look thank sharp on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yes. uh, let me just go quickly and um, tell you a little bit about uh, my background. Yeah. Now, Daniel, I don't know about you, but I love the superhero genre. I love uh -huh. superhero movies, superhero characters, the whole superhero franchise, mm -hmm. MCU, Marvel Comic Universe. I cannot wait for the next Marvel movie to come up. We've just watched one called um, Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you. Do you have a favorite superhero, Daniel? I'm not much into that, but I think uh, Superman stands out for me. Yeah, uh, that's what my kids, all that. Yeah, they talk about Superman a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think Superman is, is is the original, right? 1947, mm -hmm. a classic, right? Mm -hmm. And um, when I was young, I mean, I've had this love long affair, if you will with the mm -hmm. superhero genre right from when I was young. And when I was young, I wanted to have a superhero. I wanted mm -hmm. to have a superpower. And the superpower that I wanted to have, believe it or not, was to be invisible. Now, I wanted to be invisible for a number of reasons. I wanted to be invisible when my parents told me to leave the room because they were going to have an adult conversation. I wanted to be a fly on the wall. What are you guys discussing? I wanted mm -hmm. to be invisible when my sister was on the phone. Who is she talking to? And regrettably, regrettably, I wanted to be invisible in class, in school, sit in the back of the classroom and not be called upon by Mwalimu. But mm -hmm. fast forward these many years later and look at what I do for a career. The most visible of, care of, um, of careers. Standing in front of good people like yourselves, talking about important things like personal branding, and how you can ramp up your career and emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And the reason I use this uh, as an example uh, is because for me, I want to help all of you who are listening, who are tuned in today, to get a superpower yourself, to discover your superpower. And that superpower is going to land you hopefully the job of your dreams, the career that is going to define you, indeed your destiny. And so for me, helping people find their superpowers is what I do. I found mine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty early on in life, maybe not that early, because in fact, my background, believe it or not, is finance. When I graduated from university and I was fortunate enough to go and study uh, outside of the country. My first job was in finance. Now try to picture me sitting behind a desk, um, working on derivatives or, you know, helping bond traders with um, 
I worked for a company called Bloomberg. And so what we did is we helped people who were in the financial space, like traders and portfolio managers, mm -hmm. some of these large financial companies. And we helped them with the Bloomberg analytics, the Bloomberg finances, the Bloomberg machine, and how they could do better trades. So my background wow. was finance. And then one day, somebody called me and they took me to a training to help train some of these uh, traders. And I discovered that people responded to me in a way that they didn't respond to me when I was sitting on the, 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 the finance desk. And so I began to run with it. In fact, when I talk to people, I talk about you. If you discover what it is that you are good at, that niche that you have, something that can separate you from everybody else, run with it. And so I ran with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if we fast forward a number of years, I came back to Kenya. In fact, after living abroad for many years, I remember being at the airport mm -hmm. and this was my triumphant return to the motherland, so to speak, right? And yeah. I, I, I'm at the airport and I meet the customs official uh, sitting across from me. And I remember this like it was yesterday. He had on a shirt with a tie that had stains on it. Mm -hmm. His eyes were red. I think we had been working <laughs> at a double shift. Uh -huh. And his breath was not fresh. And uh -huh. I remember saying to myself, this is the person that people will meet when they come and visit this country for the first time. So immediately I said to myself, has this guy been trained? Remember, I'd already done a little bit of training mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in my previous job. Has this guy been trained? Now, I'd been doing training in the area of, 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 of finance, high finance, if you will. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that soft skills training, which is really what I do if we look at emotional intelligence and we look at personal branding and some of these other things that I do would be the area. But that immediately was mm -hmm. the penny that dropped. And I said, if this guy has not been trained, why, why not? And so this is when I discovered that these were skills that were needed here in Kenya. And so for the last seven or eight years, this is what I've been doing, working with professionals like yourself, Daniel, you said you you met me at Brayside. I work with professionals of all stripes, students, mm -hmm. <laughs> teachers, um, academic staff, of course, professional staff. That's where I do most of my work. Um, leadership, particularly the last few years, that's a role that I have taken on, leadership training, emotional intelligence, which I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, a lot, the skills that you need, particularly on the back of what we've gone through over the last uh, two and a half years. Right. So that's right. a little bit about how I, I came into the training space. And it's quite interesting. And uh, the fact that today we are talking about how you can actually be into your career. Your career. And one of the and key things is, is the kind of, kind of uh, what uh, the skills that you have. And it is the soft skills that really separate you. As you said, yeah, you saw this guy, it was like, is not the best representation of this country mm. and you took up on yourself to start training and teaching the personal development or personal branding and all that and i really like that because that is really what will accelerate you into uh your career goal. maybe just to switch gears i'm sure at some point you have done some mistakes and i would want to know in your career what are some maybe one or two mistakes you can say this i did and this is the lessons that i learned from it you know they say Hindsight is 2020, and all of us, I think without exception, can look back and say, yeah. when we came to that fork in the road, maybe we should have gone left instead of going right. Not that we should live our lives regretting what we have done, but there are mm -hmm. certainly decisions that had I known to, mm -hmm. yeah, if had I known then what I know now, I would certainly have made um, different decisions. Uh, for example, um, this uh, whole idea of, of mentorship. I think seeking out uh, mentors is something that I would have used to pursue perhaps a little bit more uh, relentlessly. Um, being, being able to, and even when it comes to mentorship, because I do get a lot of young people who come to me and say, Derek, you know, I'd love for you to show me the ropes and mentor me. 
-hmm. But for me, mentorship is not just about the mentor showing, uh, say in this case, a young person the ropes. It's actually about what can you as a young person bring to me who is running a business or doing my training and say, Derek, I love what you do. It is something I'm interested in. Here's where I see I can add value. Mm -hmm. So that type of, of, of mentorship. And in fact, when we get into the nitty gritty of discussing how to look for your ideal job, mm -hmm. it is about mm -hmm. what you can also offer the other person, you know, right. prove that you may, can make a fit for this organization by saying these are particular skills I can bring in. So that's one of the things I think I would have done. Um, and, um, you know, I look back and say, maybe that's something that I would have done a little bit differently when I was, um, when I was younger. For sure. For sure. Uh, sure. I, think uh, great, uh, great, uh, great. I want to go into I'm your area of speciality. Uh, yeah, I'm to, yeah, I know you are a personal brand, social intelligence, public speaking. Um, for someone who is looking for a job, how important or why should someone think about especially let's start with personal branding because i know most people really mess that up especially in the social media space and we have seen people even losing opportunities that they are best fitted for just because of some stuff they do so how is it important and how can we uh, use this to impact uh, to have a much bigger impact in terms of our job search and career growth? well daniel let's first of all start by saying that you have a personal brand, whether you choose to work on it intentionally or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it is up to you to make sure that your personal brand, which I like the words of Jeff Bezos, what people say about you when you are not in the room, is actually working for you. And particularly in something uh, as critical as uh, a job search or a career change, mm -hmm. So, and for me, it starts with the things that you do even when you are not, say, for example, in front of your target market. Mm -hmm. To me, that starts in the morning. I am a proud member of the 5 a.m. club, uh, Robin Sharma. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I feel, and, uh, you know, <laughs> I've, I've bought into this, uh, I think, for a long time, is that starting your day earlier allows you to begin to set the day so that it works for you. Having a set morning routine and doing the things that are going to help you for success. So for example, in my case, and this is all related to your personal brand, right? Mm -hmm. In my case, mm -hmm. my first win of the day when I wake up in the morning is guess what? Is to make my bed. So it doesn't matter how, <laughs> whatever direction my day takes, I can always come back in the evening and see a well-made bed. So that's my first win of the day. Mm -hmm. Having some okay. form of meditation or let's say mindfulness, doesn't necessarily have to be meditation, some mindfulness. And that can be anchored to goal setting. And that could be, you know, you could you could write it down, you could do it in a more contemplative state. So just spending a little bit of time to say, this is what I'd like to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then uh, having some form of exercise or physical activity, again, I think also, sets you up for success uh, during the day. So those are some of the things that you can work on even when you are not in front of your target market. Now you get in front of your target market, right? You're in front of your customers or your clients or hiring manager, or you have a meeting with uh, someone like yourself, Daniel, to talk to them about right. your, right. your goals and your career. You are then um, have prepared yourself. Now part of that personal branding starts within i use something called i talk about something called the cash formula mm -hmm. so cash mm -hmm. formula and personal branding is the knowledge okay nice. this nice. insatiable um uh, looking for for knowledge knowledge not just in the area that you're interested but even uncommon knowledge you know I, I always have this conversation with the students that i work with what do you listen to in the mornings Mm -hmm. you, you know, are you listening to something that is going to set you up for success or are you listening to something that perhaps and we can, you know, again, we can talk a little bit of that and and, and, yeah. and, and have some yeah. fun with that. But to me, it is about, for example, I listen to podcasts or I'm listening to audio books that are going to set me up for success. So that insatiable right. search right. for knowledge, 
the A is for attitude, okay? And all the cliches apply. Positive mental attitude, looking at the glass half full instead of half empty. So again, having that positive mindset in terms of your personal brand, certainly from within. And then the S is for the social skills. So the social skills, how do you present yourself? Are you dressed appropriately? How do you speak? How do you interact? How do you network? And then that leads to the H, which is what I call personal branding success habits. This is super crazy. I think you I mentioned several things. I think we have so many things in common that we might do. We might do. I am also a member of 5 a.m. club. I might not be perfect, but yes, I still try to wake up early. And I like the way you say, for personal branding, sometimes it's the things that we do behind the scene that actually set us up for success. It is the meditation. It is the exercise that optimizes you so that when you show up in front of your target market, in front of that employee, in front of that client, you are at your best. Not because you started being at your best that there, there and there, based on but what you have done uh, behind. Yeah, I believe also in this called the University on Wheels. My commute time is always I'm either on podcast or an audio book. I don't listen to uh, radio junk radio i think it is too there's too much sensation there and they just want to keep you there but directing what you really really want to learn now let me just take a minute and let's discuss about this idea of uh emotional intelligence i know it is a term that is drawn left right center here if someone wants to just sound a little bit smart uh maybe just narrow it down what is it and how can we really use it in the basic level for our own advantage especially in career growth you know, it's interesting. If you if you Google, say, emotional intelligence on work yeah. or emotional intelligence and careers, mm -hmm. you will literally get millions of hits. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's safe to say that this is... I'm going to use the term flavor of the month, but it is, of course, more than that. But this mm -hmm. is something that people are now looking at as not a nice to have, but a must to have. Certainly in terms of the professional world but this applies to every area of your life and emotional intelligence to me is simply about managing the emotions the feelings the moods and i'm using those terms interchangeably mm -hmm. um, um, managing them controlling them using them for my benefit and for the benefit of other people you know to get what i want to achieve if I have a particularly strong or unhealthy emotion, how do I manage that? How do I control that? How do I use that in order for me to be able to get the best out of that situation when perhaps my I'm feeling that particularly strong or unhealthy emotion? Mm -hmm. And also, if somebody else is expressing that particular emotion to me, how am I able also to manage that so that we can get the best out of our interaction or our relationship together. And to me, that's what emotional intelligence simply is. Mm -hmm. Managing, controlling, and using these emotions for your benefit and the benefit of other people. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I think this is quite good. Before I ask you for your attitude, I want to invite it's one of the oh, participants oh, 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 just yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's among the people who decided to take action, just like Isabel. And when I talked to her today, I actually gave her a call just to know what is it that uh, were well, some great takeaways. And I just felt also motivated that we are here with the, I'm able to impact. And I think she talked about, um, is it uh, networking? So let me hear from her and then I can just give uh, give you a chance to also advise her and then we can uh, continue. Hi, Gasheri, how are you doing? Hi, Daniel. Hi. I'm very happy to have you uh, today on board. I know we talked today and thank you for being gracious and uh, deciding to join us. I know you just said, yes, I'm going to be on. What would you say has been your, like that thing that really worked for you or ticked for you or your takeaway from our session yesterday and also today? Um, for me, yesterday was uh, when Syria was talking about safety goals. 
that really resonated with me because for the past two months I've been uh, ch I'm changing career, not changing careers, but uh, changing organizations that I want to go somewhere else where I can uh, kind of find grow as a project mm -hmm. manager. And uh, the one thing she said is first of all, set your goals. Uh, what kind of a job do you want at the end of this goal? What, what is the career goal? Path? And for me, that was a little bit me. So today I woke up and I set my goal. I told myself for the next job, I want to become a program specialist um, mm -hmm. or a consultant in program management, especially for health and uh, gender development projects. And uh, after that, I decided now to go for job search, which made it very easy because the minute I knew what I wanted, it was go specifically and narrow down in all the Search engines to Glassdoor, uh, LinkedIn, uh, UN jobs, and I was looking for my career path. And then for today, there's something that happened which also has been related, which is emotional intelligence. Um, and I wanted to ask is it the same like the personality that we are giving now when you are applying for jobs? Because one of the jobs I was applying to, immediately after sending my CV and my cover letter, they sent me a link to fill a um, personality. Check. And uh, the one thing they said, there's no right or wrong answer. But I felt like it, it is what he's talking about managing the, feel, the feeling and the needs and how to benefit the organization. And the questions are very tricky because they ask one question in three different ways. And in one would say, I could know what is and it was slightly confusing, but I'm glad we're such a little bit of a Yeah, I think that is a great question for you, Brad. Is this emotional intelligence the same as the is it personality test and such? Uh, no. So uh, the personality tests are different. And it's actually interesting, Gasheri, that you're talking about uh, the personality test because there's actually an emotional intelligence test that the organization that I'm affiliated with has, uh, where we actually look at the predisposition in terms of how somebody would react in certain situations. So the personality tests are very popular. These are a little bit different. The emotional intelligence, I think it's more about, and yes, it, there is a link to personality, but in terms of this particular test, uh, that's not what we're talking about. Let me give you the six areas I think that, to me, define the emotional intelligence, particularly in terms of what you're talking about. Number one is self-awareness, okay? So we all need to figure out who we are, what makes us tick, how we react in certain situations, what are our triggers. So. Number one is working on our self-awareness. Number two is working on the awareness of others. And that could be everything from being able to read their body language to the subtle signs that they're saying, that they're saying good morning, or that there's something else going on in terms of their tone of voice. And how, and how you work with other people, other people working, working with apps, apps are, are a little more challenging. challenging. You know, how, how do you adjust your style? So, so that both of you can get a similar great outcome. Number three is authenticity, which is a word that is bandied around a lot. Authentic, be authentic. To me, authenticity is just being a person who is of their word. You say what you mean and you mean what you do. And it's also living up to that promise, okay? What is the promise, for example, that your personal brand um, excuse me, is articulating. And do you live up to it? And do you live up to the best version of that? That to me is authenticity. Then there is something that we talk about called self-management. So riding the highs and the lows of any day or any week or life in general, all right? We don't want to ride too high and we don't want our depths of despair to be too low where we're in that valley of despair, but we're able to have some resilience, particularly when the going gets tough. And then there's something called emotional reasoning, which to me is about being able to marry, say for example, facts, data, uh, analytics together with your instinct, what your gut is telling you. 
So I don't know if that makes uh, a little bit of sense. Um, so for example, a lot of people, let me take the example of a manager, all right? You make um, decisions simply based on the facts, simply based on the figures, the numbers, the data. But we should also consider other things in terms of perhaps what uh, what is your instinct telling you? Um, are you bringing empathy, uh, for example? And then finally, the sixth one, I believe that's the sixth one, is inspiring other people. And whether you are a manager, a leader, or you are just starting out, I think part of our mandate, if you will, as human beings, is to inspire the people that we come across. Even you, sitting across from the table from a hiring manager, you should be able to inspire that hiring manager. You know, you, I don't know how you do that. You prove you are listening by pulling a talking point from the conversation that you are having, okay? You show that you've done your homework. You show the value that you can bring to that particular position. You are inspiring that hiring manager to say, you know what, this is the person, the kind of person I'd like on my team. So those six areas of emotional intelligence, I think to me are really important to work on. Thank you very much. I think you've even gone into details and I really appreciate that. I'm sure, Gasheri, you have taken something and thank you also for accepting the invite. I know we just talked today and uh, I really appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I think our time is really going and uh, I know Derek, you can see already some have just been here saying, I need to work on my personal brand. And I'm sure even if I scroll through, I can see more people saying about this emotional intelligent thing. I also need to get into it. And, and I like also offering my platform for you to be able to reach out to new audiences. So maybe you can share with us, if someone wants to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? Which is the quickest way to contact you? Do you have any programs? Do you have any training uh, ongoing that uh, someone would benefit from and they're here? Please share with us that. Thanks, Daniel. Easiest, best, fastest way to get in touch with me is LinkedIn, the platform that I hope everybody is on, <laughs> LinkedIn. And uh, you can see my name spelled over there. You can type in my name and uh, shoot me a, a, an invite or a connection request. I'm happy to connect with you. LinkedIn is where I showcase my programs, anything that I have ongoing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to me, that's the, I think that's the best way to get in touch with me. I mean, you can also follow me on some other platforms like Twitter, but LinkedIn is the best. Yeah, I would say actually I was able to get in touch with you mainly through LinkedIn, which is super, super great. As your panic shot, someone looking for a job, maybe to go to the next level, maybe they're in between jobs, maybe they're just fresh from uh, college, but they want to get a job. What would your advice be as we finish up? I'm going to keep it simple, nail the basics, okay? So we've yeah. talked a little bit about yeah. your personal brand. Secondly, your brand is online as well as offline. So work on your digital footprint, okay? Scrub your social media, go on platforms like LinkedIn where you can use the plethora of ways to enhance your brand, okay? master the art of networking. It could right. be from a simple coffee meeting to going to an event where you rub shoulders with important people like Daniel Mutoku. Face to face, it's not just this virtual way, but face to face, master the art of being able to sell yourself face to face. And then let me leave the last one when you do get that interview, ace that interview. Okay, we haven't talked about public speaking, but in public speaking, I talk about stories to showcase and highlight the things that you are good at, okay? Mm -hmm. Show that you've done your homework, that you're able to talk about the organization credibly, okay? Um, and like I said, prove that you are listening, okay? Pull a talking point at the end and say, oh, you, you mentioned this, this is what I can bring to the telecom. And you can be direct, you know, this, this is competitive. We all know that. Mm -hmm. So be direct and be intentional and say, I really want this job. 
that's the advice I'm going to leave the audience with, Daniel. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Can we show some love for Derek Banga in the chat? Drop that in the chat. Drop in the chat. We will be pulling them shortly. And uh, yes, as we like keeping your time, I know we're just one minute uh, past uh, the time. I really appreciate each one of you for coming in. This is your homework for today. Please do a skills inventory. And even on top of that, I think I would want to add, once you identify the kind of skills you have, both soft and hard skills, what skills do you need? You need, what skills do you identify as a gap that you need to be able to go to the next level? Yeah, might be personal branding, might be networking. I can see somebody talk to you about networking. Might be emotional intelligence. Let me know. You can put it in our Facebook group or you can drop me an email. I'll be calling some of you in the course of uh, today, tomorrow. You, I might send you a link so that you can come in and also have your question answered live by our presenters. So the winners for today, it is definitely Kasheri. Kasheri, you take yourself the book, Blueprint for Success. This is one of the books that I have written. And also, uh, Isabel, you can get a book or you can get yourself a notebook. I have a notebook here written, I'm a badass pro. So we will get in touch. I know, um, I also want to appreciate, yes, there is uh, Mary. Mary, I'll check your homework if you have submitted. You'll also get either a t-shirt or one of the things I'll get in touch with you tomorrow. So can we show some love to our guest as we wrap it up? Thank you very much. Um, yes, I can see Pedro Lila saying, uh, mastering the art of networking. This is super great. She's appreciating. Thank you for having this great uh, session. This is good. Oh, there's a question here. Is it wrong for you to follow up an interview after seven days? Follow up. There's a way you can be able to follow up. I say you can drop an email. You can make a phone call. There's a process you can follow up. But seven days is good enough. Uh, drop me an email. I can be able to get in touch with you and give you the whole uh, structure. I might not be able to go through all these uh, comments and feedback. I really appreciate all of you just being following on YouTube. I can see Teresa. In. Oh, this is great. This is great. Uh, really love this uh being direct and uh international oh yes the fact that we're able to go live international is super great ladies and gentlemen it has been a great day too looking forward to seeing your homework and we'll have some uh winners tomorrow and tomorrow we'll be looking i'll be giving all the details how do you really position yourself for this un jobs yeah i've been able to help several people you'll see with some of the testimonials so i'm really excited to have you on board tomorrow as i share that and i think for now let me drop it there i will stop the live broadcast keep dropping your appreciation in the chat i'll see you tomorrow same time 7 30.